Hi guys, um, Dr. Sujat Pathan, and we'll continue with the FR Chem Intermediate SAQ High Yields topic from where we stopped yesterday. We discussed the last thing was the renal replacement therapy indications, and as we said, it's A E I O U. Uh, you guys should know these things. They can ask you a five, uh, one and a half mark or two mark question, and you need to have to write four points. Okay. Uh, let's move on to musculoskeletal, and this will be more of pictures and pictures okay so uh, if you look closely at this x-ray around over here how would you describe the abnormality on this x-ray case of first metacarpal fracture what is first and second what is the case of thumb fracture so it is a cortical disruption or a fracture in the proximal part of the left thumb metacarpal. That's the complete answer. Proximal left thumb metacarpal. Okay. What is the eponym for this fracture? Bennett's fracture. Good. This is Bennett's fracture and when it becomes comminuted and involves the articular surface it becomes Rolando fracture okay Bennett's Rolando it's over here fall on outstretched hand Bennett's Rolando good why does why do you think these two fractures are unstable apart from the fact that they are involving the articular surface why do you think these fractures are unstable Near the snuff box. By unstable, I mean to say you can't plaster it and send home. Mm -hmm. You will need to involve the orthopedician right. for open reduction, internal fixation, and wiring. Why? Okay. Let me rephrase the question. What are the boundaries of anatomical snuff box? So what APL, APL and the So what is present radially on the radial aspect? A APL. So that is extensor. Extensor or abductor? Laterally is APL. What is lateral and what is medial? Is I have always told you, yeah. name them, yeah. this side is volar, yeah. this is dorsal, this is radial, this is ulnar. Nothing is lateral, nothing is medial. Ulnar. On the ulnar side, what is there? EPB is there. Okay. It is, on the radial side, it is APL. On the ulnar side, it is EPL. So, the abductor pollicis longus tendon gets inserted over here and that keeps on pulling the fracture segment out. So, it, it's an unstable fracture. Okay. Now, what is this? Describe the abnormality on the X-ray. Cortical. So this looks like a thumb and uh, cortical disruption or a fracture seen at the proximal metacarpal of the thumb. I don't know which side it is. Likely it should be the right side. I haven't labeled it. Uh, again, this, what is the other name for this? What is the other name for this one? Playing what kind of sports will cause you this injury? Ball catching sports. Rugby? No. Mm. Football. 
ski. Yeah. Skiing, when the ski gets stuck in the ice, thumb moves back. And skiing injury or gamekeeper's thumb, thumb. we call it. Okay. So gamekeeper's thumb. When they do that. Again, it is unstable because of the attachment of ulnar collateral ligament. They didn't say medial collateral or lateral collateral. They said it's ulnar collateral ligament. If it's gone, it's unstable. You need to get a hand surgeon involved. <clears throat> However, if you can keep it splinted this way, you can get them seen by the orthopedic surgeon or the hand surgeon the next day also. Now we come to finger injury. This is likely a 14 year old guy who's left handed. He got angry and upset over someone and he punched the wall. Now this guy has a cortical disruption or fracture at the distal end of the little finger metacarpal on the left side also known as boxer's fracture. So when they punch, they break it. The thing which is important is whether which patient needs to be surgically treated immediately versus which patient needs to be sent home and follow up with fracture clinic. The dislocated one needs to be treated immediately. Okay, this patient is there in your emergency department you have splinted his hand and sent for an x-ray. He comes back from the x-ray, you look at this x-ray. Okay. You have given paracetamol plus codeine for pain management. The bone looks like this on the lateral bone. How would you deal with this fracture. What will be your next step after taking consent from the patient? Or you feel you are going to reduce it and send to fracture clinic? Because there is absence of that sign which will come to later on. What will you do next? You've gone and told the patient, I need to reduce it. The taken consent, he's okay with it. And you told him that we'll put a plaster. So what will you do next? Analgesia first. No, that's all given. What will you do next? You've given paracetamol and codeine. As I said, there should be a sign which we need to test if that's negative. That's tested, that's negative. Then put over a... Uh, Plaster and send them home. Yeah, you want side. to put a plaster, but before that you'll have to reduce no, it, right? No, yeah. So how will you reduce it? Traction. That's an easy answer, traction, counter traction. That's that I agree. But before doing that, what will you do? We should remove the previous splint. Yeah. Uh, that is just a sling, arm sling. Uh. Had this been a distal head, distal radius, then what you would have done? Distal radius, then it's coalies. Yeah, so what you will do? Hematoma block. Don't you want to give hematoma block? And do traction, counter traction? Okay. Yeah. So hematoma block, traction, counter traction, plaster slab application, which will be ulnar cutter slab, going to home with plastic care advice, pain management and fracture clinic. Mm -hmm. You do it every day, but when it comes to exam, you think that is something different. What I have said was, close your eyes and think you are in the department and answer them. Same way you have tried. So, uh, we will go to that part. What do you test in a boxer's fracture? You ask them to make a fist. About 10 degree of angulation or rotation is acceptable. 
20 degrees is acceptable in this one, 30 degrees is acceptable in this one, 40 degrees is acceptable in this one. So when they make a fist, if it is going like this, it's fine. You will reduce it, it will come back. But if it is going like this, angulation. there is angulation. That's not acceptable. You try to reduce it. If it's not reducing, then it goes to surgery. What is this? That's just a smart bone. Oh, thumb. Oh, man, that's a good finger. No, no, there is a thumb. It may be index finger, middle mm -hmm. finger, little finger or something. This is the thumb over here. Thumb looks normal to me. What is this? It's just a smart bone. Oh, that is... The okay. base of the distal phalanx of the little finger is fractured. And you don't know what finger it is. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Hmm. There's a avulsion fracture, fracture at the base of or at the proximal part of distal phalanx of finger. Uh, what is it called? Okay. On this side, what tendons are there? FRK oh. primary tendons. Uh, Those who have passed the exam, shame on you if you don't tell it. On this side, the, yeah, basically. on this side, flexor digitorum yeah. superficial is flexor digitorum profundus. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On this side, extensor digitorum mm -hmm. tendon are there. Mm -hmm. When there is an avulsion of the extension digitorum tendon from the distal phalanx, you get Mallet finger. finger. Mallet finger. So that's your mallet finger. Extensor digitorum tendon is avulsed. And when it gets avulsed, it may take the chip and get the bone out. You put them in a mallet splint, which looks like this. You tell them, keep it on until the orthopedician says, you're going to follow up with the orthopedic surgeon or the hand surgeon. When you are going to clean your hand, keep your hand on the table, flat, you remove the splint, clean your hand. Then put the splint back and then lift. They can't do it like this and clean their hand. Otherwise, whatever repair has, ha has mm -hmm. happened, it will go away. So, that's your mallet finger, mallet splint, extensor digitorum tendon. Okay? What is that? It's a dislocation. No. So in the previous one, what you saw was... Oh, it's shown like... In the previous one, you saw this was flexed. This was straight. In this one, this is flexed. This is extended, hyperextended. This is butternut's deformity due to central slip. Okay? Central slip is gone. So the central slip is avulsed. That's Bertinet's deformity. Again, you can put them uh, in a mallet splint and ask them to follow up with the fracture clip. Let's go to forearm. So we're done with the finger. We did Bennett's, Bennett's Rolando, Bennett. gamekeeper, boxer, Bennett's. mallet, Bertinet's. and button. Okay. Now we'll go to wrist. Wrist. We'll start with scaphoid. The scaphoid looks normal in this, but I'll tell you scaphoid fracture. Scaphoid fracture and toddler's fracture. Think same. This was fallen outstretched hand. That's a uh, rotational stress on spiral fracture tibia and toddler's. Okay. X-ray done, normal, normal. Put in a scaphoid slab or back slab. You put in a long leg cast. 10 days later, X-ray done, abnormal, abnormal. Okay, so they follow up with the fracture clinic. Uh, what is this? Call it. Oh, describe it. So if you describe the abnormality, there is a cortical disruption with dorsal angulation of distal radius on the left side. Right? Call this fracture. 
If it is, this is dorsal, dorsal angulation. If it is medial angulation, it is? Medial angulation. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, the volar angulation is there. Mm -hmm. Smiths. 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 So, this is called is when there is dorsal angulation. This is mm. when volar angulation, so it's Smiths. And when Coley's or Smith involves the articular surface of the radius, Bartons. it is Bartons. Bartons. This and this, unless there is a gross abnormality or distal neurovascular compromise, you don't need to admit them. Hematoma block reduce and fracture plane follow. When will you admit this or this? apart from gross neurovascular compromise. In spite of reduction? You have reduced it. It's done. Fantastic. You put a plaster. When will you admit? Mm. What, is the, what is the population we see in in elderly people who can't take care of themselves at home. Absolutely. In the middle of the night, when there is no navigation team to arrange for this social care or plaster care, you will admit them right? and a medical team. So okay. think yes. like that. This is lateral thinking. They might say this is a 55 year old, uh, 85 year old who's come with fallen outstretched hand. Uh, You've done the x-ray, given pain medication. What two points in history would you like to ask to this patient? Who takes care of her? Whom does she live? Activities of daily living daily. and previous falls. Then they will say, x-ray shows coldest fracture. You've done a hematoma block and reduced it. You've put a plaster. What will be the appropriate disposition? Yes, sir. You'll say, oh, go home. But you forgot to read, it was 95 year old and it was 3 o'clock in the night. <laughs> so, there is no navigation team to make a decision. They will not be able to take care of themselves at the age of 1995. Montegi and Galiazi. So, uh, points to remember is fallen outstretched hand or uh, in direct blow. So Montegia Galiazi, uh, both need admission, both are unstable, open reduction in time of fixation. The thing we have to, they like to ask is, which is Montegia, which is Galiazi? Football fans? Football fans. Which team do you support? FC Barcelona. Okay. You? No. Which team is here? Manchester United. Manchester United, good. So Montegia is ulnar fracture. The other one is the other one. Okay. So Montegia is fracture of the ulna and anterior dislocation of radial head. So fracture of the ulna, anterior dislocation of radial head. Okay. Manchester United. Galiazi is the other one. So there is a fracture of the radius, fracture of the radius and dislocation of distal ulna. Easy. Mm -hmm. And we'll go to shoulder. What they have shown is some lesion over here, a chip fracture, which is called as hill sacs, a chip fracture, which is bank cards. We have always we have already studied this. How do you remember? Hill is on the top and the river bank is at the bottom. So that's your revulsion of the glenoid paper and that's your avulsion fracture of the greater trochanter. Okay. Mesino fracture. In Mesino fracture, there is deltoid ligament which is gone, avulsion of the syndesmosis and uh, there is a spile fracture of the proximal tibia. They, they won't ask Mesinus for intermediate. They might ask tibial plate fracture or bumper fracture. So whenever there is a tibial plate fracture, think uh, as a long bone fracture. It's a tibial plateau. Will they can't 
weight bear or something, you need to give adequate pain, pain medications and uh, refer to them orthopedic team. Okay. The picture is very unclear. I'll give you the scenario. 59 year old, twisted knee injury, fell down, since then unable to weight bear. On palpation, is tender on the lateral knee joint. Knee examination wise, passive movement not possible, active movement not possible, passive possible with pain. The valgus test is normal, varus test is painful. You suspect lateral, cutie, lateral collateral ligament injury. You done an x-ray and you see closely a tiny chip fracture over here. It's a very tiny chip fracture. You guys can Google it. It's called a Siegel fracture. The reason it is important is second fracture will have 100% of the time anti-cruciate ligament injury. 75% of the time medial meniscal injury. And lateral capsular ligament 75% of the time. Similarly, if there is a chip fracture here, it's called as reverse second. The only difference is it will have 100% of the time posterior cruciate ligament gone and medial meniscus and MCA. Let's see fractures of the spine. <coughs> name them, just name them. C1. Jefferson. Jefferson. C2. Hangman. Okay. Vertebral body. Chance. Uh -huh. Chance fracture. Okay. Transverse process of C7. So that's your C, C2. Uh, that, that's your C2. That's your C1. Fracture, this is the atlas. That's your chance fracture, vertebral body is gone. And this is clay shoulder. Okay, clay shoulder fracture. Foot injuries. Ottawa foot rule, Ottawa knee rule, you guys should know. Ottawa ankle rule. Okay. I'm not going to discuss that at all. This one is critical because the tendon of flexor uh, peroneus brevis peroneus brevis goes and attaches over here so when it evolves there is a chip fracture over here called as pseudo jones and when the syndesmosis at the level of syndesmosis there is a fracture it's called as a jones fracture and anything beyond the syndesmosis is the stress fracture or shaft fracture the reason is because the management. For pseudo jones, you can allow weight bearing. For these two, you don't want them to weight bear. You can put shoe. You have to put posterior leg cast. Posterior leg cast. Within one week, within one week, orthopedic follow up. This walking boot for one to two weeks, and then follow. That's fine. But main thing is weight bearing. No weight bearing. No, no weight bearing. Boot, plaster, plaster. Okay. Which tendon is inserted? Just making sure that you guys are keeping your ears open. Is it peroneus brevis? Yes. Mm. Peroneus brevis. Good. Okay. So, this scenario is 25 year old, tall female, wearing heels, walking down the stairs, has twisted ankle or foot injury. In primary exam, there was a question, ankle joint is stable in which position? And the, uh, stable on the, uh, this, uh, uh, 
So ankle joint yeah. is stable. Yeah. What is this? Dorsiflexion. Is it dorsiflexion? Dorsiflexion. Yeah, ankle joint is stable in dorsiflexion. Now this lady is wearing heels. Yeah. It will be a plantar it's, fracture. It's unstable. Unstable. Now she twists it and then she is not able to wait there. We do an AP lateral view of the foot and this line doesn't come straight line. There is a big gap over there. And that's your Liss Frank injury. If it is too much displaced, then it will need surgical intervention. Describe the abnormality on this x ray. There is a buckle fracture. A cortical defect is yeah. seen at the distal yeah. radius. Buckle fracture Sorry. or green stick fracture. Yeah. If it was both the sides, it's not a green stick, it's just a buckle fracture. What's the other name? Torus fracture. Torus fracture. Yeah. How do you manage this? Then advice. Hmm? Reflect advice. They so need not come to the fracture clinic. So you put a splint, yeah. no plaster, pain management. If the, you may or may not refer to fracture clinic based on your <laughs> current hospital policy. For exam purposes, fracture clinic follow. Fourteen year old was playing in the school and she the fell. Fitness. She comes with painful knee and she is not able to do active movement but passive movement is possible with discomfort. What is the abnormality you will see on this x Three tibial. Okay. Proximal tibial yeah. avulsion yeah. fracture. Yeah. What is the pathophysiology cause of this? Extensive use of the... What is the pathophysiological basis? What is the other name if I ask? Ask What is the other name? It is osteochondritis. Osteochondritis. Yeah. Osteochondritis. Uh, for of the proximal tibia. And uh, it's called as Osgood clatter. Rest, ice, compression, elevation, reassurance, pain. What is the similar pathophysiological condition in the navicular cordless? In the navicular Is it... Uh, it's called as colus. Colus. If it's in the calcaneum, it's called as sivers. Okay. It's given in your books. Yeah, yes, sir. Crito. Ossification center of the. So ossification the centers appearing in sequence. Mm. C is capitulum, capitulum radial head, yeah. inner epicondyle, yeah. lateral epi uh, tro trochlear, olecranon, yeah. and lateral epicondyle. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, Eleven. In this order it will. So the previous one should be present. If the previous if the previous one is not present, the only reason is we need to know that okay, this is a uh, three-year-old. So in a three-year-old, this should be present, and this should be present. Mm -hmm. This may or may not be present. However, this should not be there. That means this is a fracture, or this should not be there. This is a fracture. Mm -hmm. That the reason is to identify the sequence. So if there is a nine-year-old, all this is okay, but there should no be, not be a chip over here. However, if this is present, there can be a chip here, because that's the next one to come. So maybe in this guy, it came at nine. But if this was absent in an eight-year-old, nine-year-old, that means this should not be present. 
You got the idea. Yeah, I got that. So the eight sir, repeat the age please. One, one, three, three, five, seven, nine, eleven. Okay. Supracondylar fracture. Okay. Patient is come with fall on the elbow or fall on outstretched hand and not moving the elbow. You thought it was uh, a supracondylar fracture, but the X-ray looks normal. However, in this X-ray there is a disc uh, radial head fracture. Here. How would you identify indirectly? What two lines would you draw? Bad, bad. Same sign. So you will look for fat pad, anterior or posterior, and you will draw anterior humeral line, which will be like this. It should go through uh, middle of it or out of one third and radio capital L. Anterior fat pad can be normal. You, you have seen obese people, right? Yeah, they have fat pad over here. And now we have accepted that that's normal. Right? Imagine somebody is having a fat pad over here. That's not normal, that's Cushing's. So, anterior fat pad can be normal unless it looks like a sail of a boat. Unless it looks like a sail of a boat. However, posterior fat pad is also present over here and that's not normal. So there is some supracondylar fracture. You need to read about the indications for admission in supracondylar fracture. So here you can't write hemodynamically on or signs of red flags. Here you need to give, I think it's like 20% dis lateral displacement. You can write distal neurovascular compromise for any fracture. Admission, reason for admission, distal neurovascular compromise. But then there are specific reasons for admission. Okay, this is the scaphoid, scaphoid fracture. Which part undergoes necrosis? The proximal one. The proximal gets necrosed mm. because the blood supply is this way. Okay. This is a big confusion to everybody. What is lunate? What is perilunate? You remember, then you forget the next day. And with all respect, the person who's named this was himself confused. He should have named it lunate dislocation or capital dislocation. Not lunate, perilunate. Because if you draw a simple diagram of a distal radius. On the top of the radius is your moon. Moon is called as lun. lun. So lunate. On the top of the lunate is the capital. Now, <coughs> lunate dislocation. Capital dislocation, for example, this is perilunate dislocation. Easy? Very easy. Yeah. So don't try to memorize. This is present here, that means it is perilunate. This is gone, lunate. Okay. So which one is this? Perilunate. No, no, no. Uh, right. uh, lunate, lunate. So it's lunate dislocation. Which one is this? It's present there. So it is like this. Uh -huh. The moon is present on the top of radius. The it's other one is peril 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 What is this? It's present there. It's perilunate. No. I see the capital is here. The lunate is here. It's normal. Is it normal? There is a chip there in the. Well, there is a small fracture. There is a chip fracture there's over here. Fracture there, but there is no dislocation. No dislocation, but there is a chip fracture here. So what is this called? Which bone is in fracture? 
That is your triquetral fracture. So yeah. whenever you see any chip on the back of the wrist, it's triquetral fracture. Triquetral. Okay. This needs to be plastered and sent to fracture clinic. Okay. Who is this? Who is this? Who is this? Yeah. What is it? Uh, what is it? The gap between the teeth. Oh yeah, the gap between the teeth. It is Mr. Terry Thomas. Terry Thomas sign. Scaphoid dissociation. This is your lunate bone, this is scaphoid. When the gap increases, it is called a scaphoid lunate dissociation and it, the sign is called a Terry Thomas sign. Oh, after that person. After that person who lost his teeth. We will pause over here. We will continue with lower limb.